For almost 100 years, Cobb has been dedicated to genetic research and the development of breeding stock for the global poultry industry. Investment in technology and innovation is enabling Cobb to lead in the delivery of genetic progress and product improvements, benefiting its customers and consumers. Cobb invests 12% of its annual sales revenue in research and development around the world. New technologies like computerized selection, DNA profiling, and gene marker identification are being used to enhance traditional breeding programs and bring faster genetic progress to the industry. Cobb birds are known for their outstanding feed efficiency and unrivaled ability to perform well on low-cost, lower-nutrient diets. This innovation has enabled our global customers to reduce their cost of producing chicken meat and decrease waste by 25%. Less feed, more growth, and less waste. A sound business model for a sustainable future. From its production facilities in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia, Cobb works with its distribution partners to ensure a reliable supply of high-quality breeding stock to the global industry. Over 55 companies in the Cobb Distributor Network have dedicated their businesses to supplying and servicing customers. Their success and commitment is evident in the long-term relationships and the value they contribute to Cobb. Coccidiosis is a parasitic disease of the intestinal tract of animals. The disease spreads from one animal to another by contact with infected feces or ingestion of infected tissue. Most animals infected with coccidian are asymptomatic. In other words, you do not see clear symptoms. The impact on growth, feed coercion and lit conditions can be severe and in some cases also can cause high mortalities. Because of its influence on intestinal health and related to that litter conditions, it also can have a substantial impact on the incidence of food path lesions. Coccidiosis is one of the most common and economically important diseases for chicken worldwide. A recent estimate put the annual global impact at more than 300 million US dollars. Currently, the problem is under control by the use of anticoccidials in the feed. Anticoccidials are chemicals for treatment and control of coccidiosis. There is also the availability of vaccination against coccidiosis, but this is in general a more expensive approach and probably not as effective. Future trends are that intestinal health is becoming more important. Selection on coccidiosis tolerance can be a strategy to further improve the intestinal health. A more stable intestinal health will also be an advantage for other challenges. In a few minutes, I will explain you our research on coccidiosis, exploring genetic variation in resistance towards realistic possibilities for breeding, you have just heard that avian coccidiosis is a major concern for poultry production, as this parasitic disease causes huge economical loss by affecting growth and feed efficiency. Our research aims basically at exploring genetic variation in resistance to coccidiosis, in a view of putting it into practice while maintaining growth of the animals which is directly affected by the disease. For this, we need to search for disease-resistant phenotypes for coccidiosis and genetic markers and underlying mechanism of resistance to coccidiosis, which is quite a classical approach. So a necessary research is validating disease-resistant phenotypes for coccidiosis. Implementation of selection for disease resistance is often hampered by a lack of easily measurable repeatable and relevant disease phenotypes. In the first step, we have been measuring and analyzing a panel of disease phenotypes like body weight gain, plasma coloration, 
hematocrit lesions, rectal temperature, or cyst count. On experimental chicken lines, showing large variability for the response to coccidiosis. We have been analyzing these disease phenotypes for their repeatability, variability, correlation between the traits in order to identify a small set of pertinent phenotypes. In a second step, these pertinent phenotypes have been validated, first in a pilot study, then in a large-scale challenge of commercial animals. Ideally, we found out that measures of growth and a blood sample measure like hematocrit or cell counts, which can be automated, will be sufficient to exploit the genetic variability for further selection. The other part of the research that we conduct in parallel is identifying genetic markers and underlying mechanism of resistance to coccidiosis. There is well documented genetic variability in resistance to coccidiosis and EIG pet partners like INRA or Roslin Institute have been performing mapping studies on various crosses of resistant and susceptible lines and identifying SNPs in several candidate genes controlling coccidiosis resistant traits. We are collaborating with poultry breeder companies to transfer these results and identify genetic markers of the validated disease phenotypes in the commercial birds. All these results are integrated with functional approaches like transcriptomics, immune function measures, to better understand the regulation of the disease process and in this way improve the potential breeding strategy. What will be the next steps of our research? More research is still needed to further improve breeding strategies, for example by combining improved host genetic response to coccidiosis and enhanced response to coccidiosis vaccines. Results from our ongoing research project and collaboration with poultry breeding companies showed that selection for improved host genetic response to coccidiosis is really feasible but will have to be implemented case by case by the companies after validation. In conclusion, research on coccidiosis is still needed to always improve further the breeding strategies and their understanding of the underlying biology.